Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> we are back. And let me just make sure that I'm muted. Give me one moment, or unmuted rather. Let's see. Okay. Okay, good. I can hear me. Yay. All right. So I am Ataria Pittman, and I have my brother and my sister cousin with me, uh, Andre Moore and Lisa Williams. Hello. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So today uh, we are going to be talking about uh, one of the topics that I posted earlier and it's called, uh, you know, what God, what kind of God do you serve? I think that this is very important because I've been listening to a lot of people lately uh, try to, you know, describe God and, you know, describe, um, you know, who it is that they're serving. And it's it's unjustified, you know, some of the the things that they think um, about God, you know, and I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, like, no, that's definitely not the God of the Bible. That is not the God of Isaac and Abraham and, and Jacob. So, you know, today we hope, you know, to shed some light on this particular topic um, and, you know, just help somebody out um, if, if need be. So let's get started. All right. So giving all glory, honor, and praise to the wonderful Lord above, um, I am going to just talk a little bit um, about IUIC. This particular group, you guys have heard me mention this many, many times. Um, they have a lot of splinter groups, you know, groups who may have disbanded and now they have their own camps. They're just uh, kind of independent of um, IUIC, but they are still under the same belief system. OK, and so many of them, you know, do not uh, believe in the New Testament or, you know, anything like that. And so if you don't move forward, you definitely won't get a uh, good understanding about the Lord. Uh, so Christians, authentic Christians, like I was saying earlier, uh, we understand uh, that Jesus is the Messiah uh, that came uh, to to earth. He was the word uh, that became flesh. And, you know, we are not opposed, you know, or even offended, you know, by saying the name of Jesus. But for some reason, these groups, uh, they feel that the Messiah's name is not Jesus. You know, they, some, some of them will call him, you know, something else. And um, I want to go to a scripture to try to maybe help them out. Um, so I'm going over to Philippians uh, 2 and 9. And Sister Cousin here, uh, let's see. Sister Cousin will be able to tell us that scripture. That's it. Before we go in further, can we please have Brother Andre Moore to lead us in a word of prayer? Uh, Absolutely. Ahead, Absolutely. Brother. All right, let us uh, go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you in prayer this evening, thanking you for the opportunity to be able to come together to study another portion of your holy word. We pray, Father, that as we delve into your scriptures, that we always rightly divide your word of truth, that those who are lost may be saved. It is in your dear son Jesus' name that we do ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. you so much for that, Brother Andre. Okay. <laughs> so you said you want me to read. Mm -hmm. Philippians 2 and 9. Yes, if you That's will. Uh -huh. okay. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And she uh, requested me to read Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. You know, that name is Jesus. Okay, because... You know, at that name, every knee shall bow. You know, every tongue is going to confess once he comes back on the judgment day. So, you know, Christians are not, you know, afraid, uh, you know, to invoke the name Jesus, you know, rightfully. Um, of course, we're not going to use it in vain. Um, but, you know, we, we don't we don't find that taboo or anything like that. Um, the other point that I want to make about this is this particular group, again, just like a lot of denominations, they want to hold on, you know, to the Old Testament. So let's go over to 1 John uh, 2 and 2, 7 and 8, so that we can get a better understanding uh, about this particular writing. So we are reading uh, from the King James Version again. Uh, we are in 1 John chapter 2, verses 7 through 8. Brethren, 
I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in you and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. The old law <clears throat> could not save. Okay. And it still can't save. You know, nothing has changed about that. So, you know, in that particular writing, uh, when he is saying, you know, th this is not new. Uh, it's no secret. It's not, you know, something that was not uh, revealed to us that the old law does not save. Um, the new law is the only law that comes with the light, the spirit of Jesus, the Messiah, you know, who saved us. And so all we're doing as Christians is reflecting that light. You know, we are not the light. However, because we follow the light, we reflect it through us, uh, you know, in these dark places. These dark places is any and every doctrine, you know, that is in error, any and every doctrine that is no longer active, you know. And so hopefully this will help somebody. Uh, what do you say, brother? Uh, absolutely. You know, as we're talking about um, the uh, Hebrew Israelites, if you will. IUIC, uh, Sakaris and things of that sort and how they like to hold on to the uh, the law of Moses. What they fail to realize is that, you know, in light of what uh, you ladies st uh, stated with uh, Philippians and first John chapter two, I also want to read uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse number four. It says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone. So and I know what they like to do. You know, they want to say that, well, it's the ceremonial law and not the, the Ten Commandments, if you will. Or um, as one of the groups, they like to believe they hold to all 613 of the, uh, the laws of Moses. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at the law of Moses, there is absolutely no separation within the law of Moses. Absolutely none. You had the law of Moses. There is no ceremonial law. There's no dietary law and there's no just the Ten Commandments, the moral law. It is all the law of Moses. And, you know, scripture does confirm that we look at uh, Nehemiah, for example, uh, with within the, the law of Moses, uh, chapter eight and verse number one, it reads the, uh, the law of God, I believe. And then in verse number eight in Nehemiah, chapter eight, it says the law of Moses so the law of God is the law of Moses, and they like to separate the two. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you will find none of the sort um, within the law of Moses. So when it says that Christ is the end of the law, that's exactly what it means. Christ is the end of the law. Amen. Amen. I can't hear you, honey. They have a law. <laughs> Moses, what they're saying Moses' law, as you were saying, Moses' law came from who? God. Okay. He just was the deliverer of that message of the law so mm -hmm. that the people would know uh, what they were supposed to do and how they were supposed to act mm -hmm. in service to the Lord. That's right. That's right. It taught, you know, the, and that was just like you're saying, cousin, that was the purpose for it to teach, because these are people who were coming straight out of like, you know, a, a bad circumstance. Mm -hmm. They their confidence. It wasn't there because if it was, they wouldn't have never gone into captivity. You know what I'm saying? If they would have held on to the Lord, um, you know, and, and realized that the Lord is bigger than any enemy. But, you know, it happens being human, you know, and, and that's just our nature. Sometimes we forget. And so, you know, as a result, they needed, you know, something that could help them to build their confidence and, and to learn how to be pleasing to the Lord. So um, I like I like the way. Uh, brother had said it. If you guys saw the debate or, or the discussion that we had with Johan, um, you made a really good point uh, when you explained to him that, listen, if Moses' law was still in effect, then that means that Jesus, by him saying that he, you know, uh, takes away sins, that means that he would have sinned himself, you know, because they had a whole different, you know, set of, uh, of, of ways to atone or to try to push those uh, sins forward. 
you know, but, but this guy, you know, it would have been blasphemy, you know, if, if that was the case. Um, and so if he was not the Messiah, uh, you know, said like that. And so it was just, it was one of those surreal moments that I was like, that should have been a eureka for everybody. But, you know, just in case somebody forgot, please go back and look at the discussion that we had uh, with Mr. Johan, because that one was a really good discussion. And I hope to have more discussions like that, you know, because the more that we are able to reason together, you know, the more we can, you know, see the light, you know, see, see, see the, the good things. Now, another thing that I want to to bring up is is what people forget too. You know, the 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 Jews even back in that day they misunderstood. You know, and, and there's a lot of scriptures that help us to know that they misunderstood the nature of of Jesus' kingdom. You know, uh, we know through scriptures they tried to, you know, when he walked this earth, they tried to make him, you know, be a king, <laughs> and he ran away from that. Like, no, you don't understand. Uh, you know, in um. John 6 and 15, um, let me see, this is, yeah, this is where they were saying, therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again, you know, to a mountain by himself because he understood his kingdom is not of this world. You know, that's what he was telling uh, uh, Pilate. He was like, this kingdom is not of, my, of this world. If it was, believe me, we wouldn't be having this conversation, basically, because <laughs> my people would fight. You know, he could have just called one angel. And it's so it's so funny how um Daniel just this past Sunday, our preacher, he was saying he had brought that right back up. One angel slaughtered a hundred and what was it, a hundred and eighty uh five thousand Samaritans overnight. Okay. One angel. All right. It's imagine two, three, four, five. Come on. So Jesus didn't need no help at all, but he understood that his kingdom was not of this world. Now Luke 7, uh, 20 and 21, it says, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, uh, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God uh, is within you. Now, this is for the Christian you know, that, that, that he's referring to. This ain't just for any uh, you know, person that just says, okay, I feel like I'm saved. This is for the Christian, for, for Christians who have obeyed, uh, you know, the, the steps that it takes to become, uh, you know, a, a citizen of the kingdom. This is this this statement he is making for for that individual. Uh, the kingdom is within you, meaning nobody can see it. It's nothing that you would see with your eye. And this is what IUIC uh, do not understand. They keep thinking that one day there's going to be an Armageddon of sorts and that, you know, their God uh, is playing games like like a chess game and that uh, 144,000, you know, are going to be the elite and, you know, they are then going to have to slaughter everybody who is who is a non-elite. Now, we've dealt with this before, uh, you know, with the Jehovah Witnesses. That's why, you know, basically they're probably cousins at this point. Um, but you got to think about it. What kind of God would that have to be that plays games with with humans? Um, you know, that would make them slaughter one another, uh, that, that, that previously he told them to be brothers and to love your neighbors and, you know, uh, better than yourself. That that's a, a contradiction in itself. So, you know, I, I hope today that they understand that is not the God of the Bible. That is not the God that we serve. Our God is not a serial killer. Um, our God, you know, is not, uh, I think I think Andre said he's not schizophrenic, okay? Because that would be really schizophrenic to to say, "Yeah, I love you," and then I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> like that's crazy. Yeah, absolutely, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah, what you what you say, brother? And you know, I I believe all of this is due to not allowing the scriptures to explain themselves. You know, um, Paul, the apostle Paul, was saying First Corinthians chapter two with regards to the uh, scriptures, meaning the Old Testament, that it was a mystery. You know, the mystery, how um, it was uh, relayed in a cryptic language, if you will. And what Paul and the other apostles are doing, and uh, Luke as well, James, Jude, uh, they are revealing that mystery. They're revealing that mystery. We have probably heard the statement before the uh, Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Reveal. Mm -hmm. Well, this is exactly what it means. You know, the scriptures will always explain themselves. 
That's why we see Paul so often quoting from the Old Testament because he's letting us know this is what this scripture meant in Hosea. Or this is what this scripture meant with uh, Joel, as uh, Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. So I, I believe that, you know, just watching them and how they look at the scriptures and they pick and choose which scriptures to pull out to uh, prove their point, they are not allowing the scriptures to explain themselves. They take the scriptures out of context um, and to prove a point. But if you, again would just allow the scriptures to explain themselves. The apostles will clearly tell you what that scripture means in the New Testament as they convey it from the Old Testament. So, mm -hmm. Amen. That is so true. So, so true. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> you got it. Okay. All right. So, um, the other thing that I, that I noticed about them too is, uh, I want to go over to, da, 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 let's see, let's go over to Mark 9 and 1, uh, because that is, that that's one that I, I rarely hear them talking about uh, when it comes down to, you know, going forward. Um, it seems like every time that uh, I see them or I, I listen to maybe one of their Bible studies or something to that effect to try to get an understanding of where they're going wrong, um, I hear them kind of skip uh, this part. So, cousin, uh, if you have Mark nine, nine one, mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, again, I'm reading from the King James Version. Uh, we are reading uh Mark nine, verse one, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, how many, it, it's, it's so, it's so crazy to me. It's like, like, like brother was just saying, okay. Old Testament is saying, okay, one day it's coming. <laughs> the kingdom is coming <laughs> one day, you know, Jesus is coming. The kingdom is coming with him. He going, you know, this and that. Okay. Now we get to the point. Okay. It's almost here. It's so close that even the people that are standing here, right here, you ain't even going to die or, you know, by the time it comes, that's just how, how close it is. And, and we see it come with power, uh, in X two. So they don't realize that, you know, the, the kingdom did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was not a fluke. It was not, you know, something that people missed, you know, as some of the premillennialists try to try to go into, you know, oh, you know, well, he he said, uh, this is not the time, so I'll just come back later. <laughs> no, that is not it. Because when Jesus comes back, that is it. I think when we were talking to Johan, that was a very uh that was something that he he just could not grasp at the time that the kingdom is already here and that the next visit that we get from Jesus is it. It is not going to be a social call at all. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of what you were saying, uh, as we look at Mark 9 and 1, if the kingdom hasn't come yet, I mean, these people that, you know, when die until they saw the kingdom, I don't see them living. They would have to be living now. That's well over 2,000 years. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Evidently, we you know have to keep it in its context to see exactly what Jesus is talking about. That's right, and it's so crazy to me too that you will hear them. They always say, "Okay, you know Abraham this and Abraham that." Okay, Abraham died to live no more. Okay, so did Isaac, Jacob, and everybody else. Jesus is the only one that died and rose again. So that should tell you there's something different. There's something very significant about his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Like he said, in order for him, you know what I'm saying, to, to purchase us, you know, he had to endure that. And when he arose, his power showed, you know, that he 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 laid it down and, and got it right back up again. Nothing could stop him. And that's what he said about his kingdom. So you got to think about it. Okay. If he has a kingdom now, that don't compare to Moses law at all. Cause Moses law couldn't do, could not do any of the things that this kingdom does. There was no grace and mercy to this level for everybody. No. 
your punishment could be very swift. You could be stoned at the uh uh what at the word of two or three witnesses. You know, uh, it was very swift. Uh, we have seen people get smited, uh, swallowed up by the earth. <laughs> we have seen we have seen some uh catastrophic things in the Old Testament. That ain't what you want. You want grace and mercy, but what's funny to me, they try to hold on to both, right? So they say, yeah, Moses is still in effect, but because we don't have to sacrifice anymore, you know, we we have grace and mercy. No, 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 that don't work. You can't yeah. hold on to both. It's like a revision. They think the law has been revised rather than changed. And nowhere in the scriptures do you see that God said he's going to revise the law of Moses. <laughs> Absolutely nowhere. You know, uh, we looked at Romans 10 and 4, Christ is the end of the law. Colossians 2, 15, uh, the law has been nailed to the cross. Uh, they like to believe that the law of Moses has been revised to now, oh, okay, we have grace and mercy in the Holy Spirit. Nowhere in the scriptures do you see that God said, I'm going to revise, but give a new law, you know. That's right. That's right. Or a new covenant, I should say. So. Yep. And, and we know what that means. <laughs> so yeah. it's so funny to me. Sometimes they try to trap you, you know, into, okay, don't say law or don't say, you know, I'm like. I, I, I never thought that that would be a, a hard concept, you know, <laughs> to law, covenant, you know, things, that, statutes. You know, I, I never thought that that would be something that people would actually, you know, have a problem with understanding. Um, well, but I, I think, too, um, as I'm reflecting back on our uh, conversation with Johan, mm -hmm. one of the things that he was saying is um, basically what we're trying to say is that under this new law that we have in the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's no morals that need to be kept. And what he failed to realize, as you know, with a lot of them, is that we are to always keep to the moral attributes of God. Mm -hmm. And that that's the whole point of it. For example, uh, first Peter chapter one, verses 15 and 16. That's a commandment. Uh, Peter quotes from the Old Testament, which was Leviticus. Be holy for I am holy. You know, so we are to always hold ourselves to the moral attributes of God. That's right. And there are over. I mean, I, I'm probably off a bit with my number. There's over a thousand fifty. Of those, I mean, and just just the name of a few of them. Uh, let's go into maybe some that are more common. Uh, be no idolater, First uh, Corinthians ten and, and seven. Uh, you know, be uh followers and be uh, faithful and patient. Hebrews six and twelve. Uh, let's see. Uh, being steadfast. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Uh, always abounding in God's work. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. I mean, there are so many you know, to help us to understand um, how to perfect, you know, our spiritual walk. And, and it's one to where you literally um, have to con uh, um, continually compare your yourself to the word. And that's, that's kind of our design. We have to stay, um, you know, and, and like cousin says, cousin says it best, you know, <laughs> she always reminds me, have that constant IV drip of, of the Lord, you know, because we need that God, our, just by our very design, we forget, you know, and so we have to keep our heart condition um, from the inside, you know, um, with him, his statutes, his ways. And that's how, you know, we can actually be righteous. Um, I, 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 I pity those who serve a, a, a God that they think that works, you know, will somehow grant them something. You can't do enough works to to earn you heaven, an elite ship, a, a, a place, you know, with God, an audience with God, uh, a standing with God. The mm -hmm. only thing that will get you in right standing with God is to obey and be obedient till death. That's it. That's all. His new law teaches us many, many times that that's the moral compass, the Bible. Yeah, and it's the mind of God. One of the verses that they love to go to would be Ephesians 2, verses uh, 8 through 10 or 8 and 9, where it says that, um, you know, we're saved by grace and uh, things of that sort. Um, 
um, with regards to the law, I may be referring to something else, but the point that I, I wanted to bring up there is um, we are saved by grace, not by uh, works. The works that Paul is talking about there is works of merits under the law of Moses. Now, people like to stop at verse number nine, but forget to read verse number 10, because verse number 10 tells you that we are created for good works, that we can walk in those good works. And what are those good works? Obedience, works of yes. obedience, not works of merit. That's right. That is so right. You know, here's the thing what people they 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 keep trying to make God have a human thought process. They 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 keep trying to humanize God. That's impossible. That would be a downgrade of downgrades. I mean, come on. Even the good Lord, you know, said that when he became a human, you know, he was made a little less than the angels. You know, so that lets us know right there, you know, when when it comes down to like his creations, out of his creations, you know, we're we're down here. You know, angels are even above us and then of course above them is is God. So, what would make you think that he would, you know, come down low, you know, to try to uh plan and 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 that sort of thing. It doesn't make sense, right? Okay. He is the source of wisdom for one. But think about it like this. Um, God knows everything, okay? Apparently, the God that they create, <laughs> he doesn't know everything um, because he leaves a lot of things up to humans. You know, as far as like, if, let's just say like if, if we humored them and we thought that that was real for just a second, okay? So the elite, now the elite is supposed to then turn around and slaughter their their brethren, Okay. Um, that's something God could have done like that. Why would he need you to, to, I mean, life itself is the, is the battleground is the war. If you can overcome, you know, life, um, that then, you know what I'm saying? You'll be worthy. You know, if you obey, then you'll be worthy of your reward. Um, it's not, uh, you know, then, you know, he can test you some more, some more, some more, but like brother is saying, Yes, there are some works, you know, that we have to do, but you, but, you, but with proper study, you will understand what he means as far as like works of merit versus works of obedience. Um, God didn't just say, I'm going to leave this up to you, you know, and that's it. No, every, everything that God has done, he do something, then man got to demonstrate. He do something, then man got to demonstrate because it's man that keeps getting into trouble. It's man that keeps having, you know, God to rescue him. I mean, look at the Old Testament. Before all of that with the judges, he would raise up a judge, they would do the same thing. Raise up a judge to get him out, they would do the same thing. And that is the theme throughout the Old Testament. So it, it behooves me that somebody could actually think that the Old Testament is the way you should stay. That is so old school. That is so slave mentality. You know, Jesus is free and he gives us uh, freedom liberally, you know, by sacrificing himself. So like brother is saying, the, the things that he's asking for is small. It is not, you know, uh, um, something that's impossible for us to do, but you must properly study and understand who you serve. If you think like they think that you serve some sort of schizophrenic serial killer, that's the opposite of love. God is the father of all lights, meaning all things good, all things. Even when he made humans, he said we were good, very good until we allowed devil, the devil to trick us. OK, he tricked us out of our spot because we let him. OK, we're doing the same thing today, just in a different way. Everybody who will not obey God is letting the devil trick them out of their spot. They're letting skin color uh, get in their way of seeing the truth. They're letting uh, their bias and their racism get in the way and, and keep them from the truth. Um, and, and that's what the devil is using to tempt them because he knows that they're racist. He knows that they're biased. He knows that they're abusive. And he knows that, you know what I'm saying, um, they have all of these, these uh, issues that they don't address. So you don't have to address those things in IUIC. You don't have to address those things in the denomination. See, over there, you could just come as you are and stay as you are. <laughs> but over here where it's obedience based 
You have to continuously grow. You have to continuously tell yourself no. You have to continuously do better than you did yesterday. You have to continuously stay in that word. And that's how you attain righteousness. And I, I want to bring up something because a thought came to mind as you were explaining with regards to the law of Moses and mm -hmm. you know how they like to keep the law of Moses. And yeah. one of the verses they love to highlight is Matthew chapter five, verses <laughs> 17 and 18. Okay. to show that the law of Moses is to be kept today. Well, if that's the case, they have a huge problem. Now, we we just noted earlier, Nehemiah 8 uh, verses 1 and 8, how the law of God is the law of Moses. There's no separation between or no distinction within the law of Moses. All laws had to be kept. So if they go to Matthew 5 verse 17, where Jesus says, every jot and every tittle, well, every jot and every tittle, Jesus obeyed that perfectly. So if every jot and every tittle is to be kept today, if that's your standard, Matthew 5 and 17, that we're to keep the law of Moses today, you've got a huge problem. You have no Levitical priesthood for sacrifice. Worship had to be done in Jerusalem. So you, in essence, just a feature of your very own purpose, you know, because you cannot keep the law. Can't. And and that's what's crazy to me because I'm just like I, I was I was trying to explain that to them. I was like, you in the wrong uh location by far. And then, you know, who who can uh summon the Lord like that? You know, because <laughs> like no they did priest. back then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be a bloody, bloody, bloody sacrifice. Butcher. Okay. Butcher. So you, you can't say, well, Jesus is our high priest today because under the law of Moses, high priests had to come from the Levitical priesthood. Yeah. And the Hebrews writer lets us know that nothing was spake of the sort of a priesthood coming from Judah. Mm -hmm. It has yeah. to come from the Levites, That's of right. which there's absolutely no way that can be done today. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The Lord was so upset with them. <laughs> Ooh, how they were being, how they were um able to be bribed. They were, you know, not doing their jobs. They were, um, you know, basically uh, accepting payoffs and things of that nature. The Lord was so upset with them. I want to say he may have even called them a harlot or something to that effect. They committed spiritual adultery. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that so it, it's not looking good for the Levites. <laughs> 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 see that's what i'm saying y'all want to go back i don't think you want to go back <laughs> i don't think that's what you really want you don't understand truly you know Furthermore, um, there's, a, um, there's a law within the law of moses um the scripture doesn't come to mind um off the top of my head but let's just say you wanted to grow a garden in your yard there are specific vegetables that you cannot even grow together in the same yard you know, that's how meticulous the law of Moses was. You want to go back to a law like that. For an example, if if the law uh, said you can't grow vegetables and carrots within the same garden. I mean, they really are not examining their the doctrine scriptures. as they, you know, are pushing it yes. for other people mm -hmm. to believe it. Um, mm -hmm. Further examination will show, obviously, that the uh, the law of Moses is not in effect and mm -hmm. it couldn't even be kept mm -mm, couldn't and all of y'all and, and this you know this will really break your heart <laughs> if you look if you're a hebrew israelite and you like dogs just get that out your get it out your head because that was an unclean animal <laughs> back then <laughs> so yep bye poochies that's it <laughs> that's it y'all don't understand you know and that's what's crazy um that and see that's why i keep saying cults you know because your leadership, you know, it um it, it is who you guys answer to. You're following a human. And the Lord said, we're not supposed to do that. You know, there there's no private interpretation uh of the law of the the um oracles of God. We don't need a middleman at all. You know what I'm saying? Uh that that that's a part of that freedom that we have with Jesus. You don't need a priest. We are priests. That that that's what people don't understand, and, and I, I forget the little gentleman who was after me not too long ago, uh, you know, t telling me that uh, I I can't quote <laughs> Paul or Peter or anything like that. I'm a priest, so I can I can quote anything I want. Says God, thus said the Lord. 
That's right. Yes. We appreciate it. There you go. So we love you. You know, we um we hope, you know, to to come back um on Mondays um to just kind of get, you know, help those. Because, I mean, there are many. When you think about it, the back in the day, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say this was at least 10 years ago. 10 years ago, IUIC was not nearly as large as they are now. Um, a lot of people don't know about them because they don't advertise. They don't, you know, it's it's, it's basically like a word of mouth. But you got to realize word of mouth, you know, is how uh, big organizations stay thriving by word of mouth. Some organizations don't even have to um, advertise at all, you know, and you just already know, uh, you know, that, that, that they just they got they got a good quality product. You know what I'm saying? Um like Kirby vacuums for one. I'm just gonna say that real quick. Uh, for for many many years they didn't advertise at all. That you would just have a little salesman that would probably go door to door, whatever, try the little uh thing, and, and that's how they made their money. Okay, they didn't have to do commercials and fancy this, then da da da. But they were huge. Like I think at one point the number one uh you know in the nation at one point. Okay, so so word of mouth. What I'm trying to say is word of mouth can really you know uh get an organization going. We hope to shed light on this darkness because that's what God would have us to do. So um, you'll probably hear us, you know, to continue to talk about cults and things of that nature, especially this one, because they're getting larger and we need to start talking about it. And I pray that other brothers and sisters will do the same because we need our uh, other generations to know growing up, this is not right. Definitely. Any final words, cousin? Yes, I, I just, just listen. <laughs> Take it in everything. Uh, and you mentioned this before. I'm I'm almost certain on another one of your, uh, well, our podcast because it's all of ours. It's not that's yours, right. It's mine, in the kingdom, all our other brothers, that's right. our sisters. It's yes. all our brethren, all our sisters that are Christians. Yes. See, that's a whole another topic because everybody mm -hmm. they say is they're Christian is not a Christian, which is why we're here talking about those Hebrew lights and I see you and see you eyes and. <laughs> all those little groups, all those people that they are. Right. But we know, uh, and looking at uh, the Gospel of John, mm -hmm. when Jesus was over there talking to that woman at the well, right. And he was telling her, you know, the time will come. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, you know, come when worship will no longer be in a specific location. That's right. But the spirit. Mm -hmm. So we know that God is a spirit. We said it yes. in John 4 and 24. And for those who worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. He is not, uh, as they would think, uh, a physical body or it's not mm -hmm. a physical location, as they say, mm -hmm. going back to Jerusalem and mm -hmm. going to build the temple and all this, those things will be resurrected. Well, like I say, um, in Colossians 1 to 15, uh, uh, calls God the invisible God. Mm -hmm. So there again, we know he's not a physical, it's not a physical body, mm -hmm. uh, this is spirit. We're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And mm -hmm. his truth is what he says. That's right. Not That's a right. physical body. This is not a physical kingdom. We're talking about spiritual. Amen. Amen. That's a good, good observation right there. All right, brother, if you will pray us out and we will be adjourned. <laughs> All right. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you in prayer once again, thanking you for the opportunity to study another portion of your holy word. We pray that the things that were discussed here this evening may be uplifting and edifying to all. And to those who may be struggling with the scriptures, that it may shed light on your word and what you would have us to do to be in obedience to you through your word. It is in Jesus' name that we do ask and pray. Amen. 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 Again, thank all you right. for being with us, Brother Andre. Yes. Until next time. All right. We love you. Bye. <laughs>